What's up, peeps? It's excellent to be back with you in the saddle. It is me, your boy, the ex-NFLer turned Yogi Eben Britton. Hope this finds you doing very well. I've missed you. I've missed the microphone. I have been in the midst of completing a 300-hour yoga teacher training. Really fascinating. Really incredible experience. Very challenging. This is the 26 and 2 Vishnu Ghosh uh, lineage, formerly known as Bikram, hot yoga, for all those wondering. Um, It's been intense, man. This is the final week we're coming into, and uh, I've taken the last couple weeks off the podcast just because I honestly haven't had the time. I really didn't want to take that much time off, but... It was necessary with my schedule, Um, but I wanted to join you and uh, get something down for this week, and that's what we're going to do, y'all. This is going to be a catch-up episode, a little bit of riffing, some book recommendations, some insights from the recent challenge of this yoga training. Uh, some announcements, some shout outs, some all around good stuff going on, um, in the midst of the insanity of the world. Let's be honest. Um, this episode of the Ebb and Flow podcast is brought to you by my good friends over at Bioptimizers. Guys, what do you think about when you think about blood sugar? What does that mean to you? Well, one of the big keys to optimal health is balanced blood sugar. This is critical for staying slim, lean, uh, and continuing to build lean muscle. Um, As we all do, as I have done, what happens when you scarf down a pizza or an entire carton of ice cream. Basically, your pancreas releases insulin, which tells your body there's plenty of energy, so now is the time to store fat. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter whether you eat the ice cream or you drink even a glass of orange juice. Processed carbs from chips to crackers to donuts all have a similar effect on your blood sugar. When you take in a lot of carbs too quickly without much fiber to slow down the absorption, you'll experience a blood sugar spike followed by the sugar crash. Leads to low energy, brain fog, weight gain, all the things we're looking to avoid when we are trying to function optimally. This is the biggest, this is the experience I have talked about on my journey with food. When I was a teenager, or I don't know, maybe 12, 12 years old. I remember this day, my dad made us pancakes for breakfast. I ate the pancakes and I remember I had to go to sleep right after eating them. And this was a very crystallized memory of that blood sugar spike, sugar crash experience. And look, we all do it. We all experience these things. It's a matter of becoming mindful to it so that we can adjust our behavior, adjust our diet, adjust how we eat and how we approach food, our relationship with with food. But for when we do choose perhaps that cheat meal, we indulge, we've got blood sugar breakthrough from Bioptimizers. Super awesome product. It's easy to take. Uh, It's been through numerous tests. It's a fantastic formula for maintaining healthy blood sugar levels. Um, In fact, Bioptimizers went through five different formulations before landing on this one. Um, I've tried this product a number of times. Last night, we celebrated my wife's birthday, had some, had a big ass slice of birthday cake, took some blood sugar breakthrough to give it a try. And I have to tell you, I woke up today feeling pretty fresh. Normally after a big, heavy, like indulgent cheat day, 
I can definitely wake up the next day feeling that brain fog, feeling turned down mentally, depressed, all those things. And I felt none of that today. And so what blood sugar breakthrough does is when you take it before meals, you'll avoid the worst effects of high blood sugar, like weight gain. You'll also build lean muscle mass faster while enjoying more energy, mental clarity, and fewer cravings. So for all of my listeners, Bioptimizers is offering an exclusive deal. Go to bloodsugarbreakthrough.health forward slash ebb and flow. Use the code ebb and flow 10 to save 10% on your next order can't recommend it enough uh, and for a limited time by optimizers is also giving away free bottles of their best-selling products p3 ohm and mass zymes with select purchases so check that out for sure mass zymes and p3 two of my favorite products i've ever taken these are digestive enzymes incredible incredible uh, products highly recommend these supplements these guys do an incredible job with everything they do. The magnesium, the mag breakthrough, the blood sugar breakthrough, mass zymes, P3 ohm, all that good stuff. So head over to bloodsugarbreakthrough.health forward slash ebb and flow. Use code ebb and flow 10 to save 10% on your next order. Highly recommend it. Um, all of that's in the show notes. Before I send you off to this episode, a lot of cool announcements, so be sure to listen all the way through. A lot of good things happening this fall, despite, you know what I mean. Um, and uh, that's about it, folks. Lots of love to you guys. Really stoked to be here with you, as always. Enjoy this episode of The Ebb and Flow. Ah! This is what I knew I was forgetting something. couple things. Would love to see you join us on the Power Tribe on Patreon.com forward slash EDS Britain. We've got monthly live group sessions, yoga, meditation, breath work. Love to see you there. Also, I'm offering one-on-one -on -one coaching. This is one-hour sessions. One-on-one -on -one to optimize your life, to put you into your highest state of greatness. And uh, I look forward to seeing you there. Um, last but not least, we are going, I know I mentioned it earlier in the last few episodes, we are going to release a best of series to, f to close out season two before we get into season three. A lot of good things coming season three. Excited for it. Taking this thing to the next level. Lots of love to you guys. Enjoy this episode. I'll see y'all on the flip side. Peace. You have unlocked the eternal link to internal source. The key of imagination. Your admission. Access to the enlightened dimension. The gateway at the junction of darkness and light. The place at which the chaos of our conditioned frame of mind give way to a life in constant flux, only to be mastered through vigilant discipline. Peaceful times may come, testing times may go. This is the ebb and flow. What's up, peeps? I might have said that already. So, just to catch you up a little bit, I am heading into the final week of this 300 hour yoga teacher training. It's been super challenging. It feels like training camp all over again, minus the brutality of smashing my body into another 300 pound dude 200 times a day in full body armor. So 
while the physical practice is super challenging. The 90 minutes in the hot room, a hundred they say it's 105 degrees. It feels way hotter than that, but there is a hu- there is humidity happening as well. So, minus the brutality, I actually feel like I'm getting into better shape. We used to laugh in football that perhaps football was the only sport that you got into worse shape as the season went on. Um, two 90-minute classes a day. This is, you know... Bikram, 26 and 2, hot yoga. Uh, incredible experience. Very challenging, very insightful. Learned a lot about myself. It's got to be the hard way, is something I've stumbled upon. I've touched that understanding of myself before, but it has really crystallized over the last few weeks. I'd like things to be hard or I have felt comfortable or I have created patterns and my life in many ways has been built around having having to do things the hard way and if it's not the hard way all the time it's I'm not doing it right or I'm not it's not happening the way it's supposed to happen. And in this more evolved version of myself, I've realized that I don't want that anymore. It's no longer serving me. It's no longer necessary. I would much, I'm much more... interested in being in the flow and that doesn't mean that life won't be difficult because that's sort of the that's the underlying truth is that it has nothing to do with the difficulty so that's been interesting more on that later um so we do a class in the morning a class in the evening And then in between, we have all of these posture clinics and we're learning the dialogue of how to teach the postures and how to take a classroom through the postures. It's really, it's powerful, man. It's powerful to get uncomfortable. It's powerful to get up in front of people and do something that you're perhaps not familiar with. It's powerful to do this difficult physical work. It's very, it's been, uh, I'm so happy that I did it and I feel much more anchored through this process. My mother teaches the anatomy portion of this yoga teacher training and um, I realized what a master of the human body my mother is, mind-blowing, wizard, master, Yoda. Jedi master of the human body, anatomy. Um, It was a profound experience to see that. So that was really cool. You know, and meanwhile, through all of this, because I've had the anxiety about the podcast. Ah, fuck, I don't have time. Ah, I'm going to get, I'm going to record an episode and get it done on Sunday or Saturday. Or whatever moment I have off. And then I'd find myself in that moment. And I'm just exhausted. And I have no energy. I have nothing to talk about. So what am I going to say? And so I just let it go. I let it go for two weeks. No new episodes. No new releases for two weeks. And it's okay. You know? It's okay. I don't. I don't necessarily need to be grinding it to the bone 24-7. It's okay to spend some time with my family. You know? And that's really what my heart feels called to do. Like, I'd rather, after these, you know, 12, 14-hour days practicing yoga and learning about yoga, 
I just kind of want to come home and chill and like spend some, talk to my wife for a minute, talk to my daughter for a minute with the energy I have left. So that's been interesting and good, good to work through. Um, My book, The Ebb and Flow, Basic Tools to Transform Your Life. I'm f- I've finished the final edits. It will be back to my publisher in the next week or so, give or take. So I'm looking at a fall release of my book, which is really exciting. I think you guys are really going to dig it. to give you a little a little taste I take you through my childhood my career in the NFL my path through football the total destruction of myself and how I found and came to these tools that helped me pick myself up off the floor and dust myself off and heal and evolve and reestablish myself At the end of the day, if we are being of service to each other, to the universe, to nature, our brothers and sisters, humanity, etc., if we're being of service, there's nothing more we can ask for. So meanwhile, I'm taking this yoga training and the world is just getting more and more insane. If it's not crystal clear to you by this point that pharmaceutical companies own our politicians and really corporations for that matter, if it's not crystal clear to you that these corporations literally own our politicians, I don't know what you're looking at. And that's okay. (laughs) Because I understand you're scared. We're all scared. Fear is highly prevalent on the planet. 75% of the human population is living from a state of fear. That means every action you take, every word that you speak, is anchored in fear. What's the antidote to fear? Compassion and love. So those of us who feel angry about what's happening in the world somehow easier said than done somehow we need to carry the torch of which is compassion and love Because that is truly the only way out. We can't fight against each other anymore. All of these things, every single thing has been weaponized to divide us. The masks, the vaccine, food, medicine, ideology, all of it. It's been weaponized through propaganda. 
and nonsense to literally to divide us so that we are easily more easily manipulated and controlled so it's on us it is on us no one's going to do it no one's going to do it it's simply on us and that's okay <laughs> i actually have faith in human beings I said that to a friend. He said, I have faith in God. I said, okay. Well, God is in human beings. God moves through human beings. I have faith in the inconquerable nature of humanity. Something I've been thinking about, you know, throughout history, weak civilizations are overtaken by stronger civilizations stronger more aggressive civilizations and then you look at nature and we have that there's a there's a hierarchy in nature in the physical domain of predator predator and prey apex predators goes down the line why is this why is this You don't see many gazelles killing lions. Hmm. Why? Then you see predators who kill other predators. For instance, jaguars will jump in the water and fucking kill a caiman alligator. Drag it up into the forest and eat it. Why? Why do we have a hierarchy of dominance, physical dominance? It's an interesting question to ask. Because you look at our country. And last night at this party, I was sitting at the table eating with An Armenian, a Mexican, and a Colombian. Who all very closely in their family, either their parents or their grandparents, were immigrants to this country. And it was interesting hearing them talk about growing up with their cultures. They'd go to school in L.A. and they weren't American enough. Then they'd come home and their parents or their grandparents would force them to speak their, their family's language. And so they were, and they were felt like at home, they were scolded for not being Colombian enough or Armenian enough or Mexican enough or whatever it was. And they were talking about, you know, the current state what is american culture and i remember when i was a kid i didn't quite understand what america was all about but what i've realized as i've gotten older is how I know absolutely what America is all about. And America is about freedom. That's what this country was started for. That's why everybody comes here. That's why this country was started. Freedom. Absolute freedom. Complete freedom. And whether you like it or not, I don't, I don't really understand, I don't know what the argument is to be had, but that is being chipped away at. There, there are entities, agencies, institutions, our government, our president, our president, I use that very lightly, the person who is playing president right now. Literally using language to divide and strike fear in 
the hearts of its citizens. Saying it's not about freedom. Yes, it is about freedom. Jojo. It's all about freedom. That's the only thing that matters in this country. Literally the only thing. And any argument you have against that, yeah, but, uh, that's all anchored in fear. Pure and simple. Every argument against freedom is anchored in fear. Fear is not of the higher consciousness. Fear is low consciousness. Any argument against total and absolute freedom is an argument anchored in fear. From Vivekananda, living at the source. Freedom is never to be reached by the weak. Throw away all weakness. Tell your body that it is strong. Tell your mind that it is strong. And have unbounded faith and hope in yourself. Yourself. You know, there are bullock carts in India. Usually two bulls are harnessed to a cart and sometimes a sheaf of straw is dangled at the tip of the pole, a little in front of the animals but beyond their reach. The bulls try continually to feed upon the straw but never succeed. This is exactly how we are helped. We think we are going to get security, strength, wisdom, happiness from the outside. We always hope, but never realize our hope. Never does any help come from the outside. There is no help for man. None ever was, none is, and none will be. Why should there be? Are you not men and women? Are the lords of the earth to be helped by others? Are you not ashamed? You will be helped when you are reduced to dust. But you are spirit. Pull yourself out of difficulties by yourself. Save yourself by yourself. There is none to help you, never was. To think that there is, is sweet delusion. It comes to no good. (sighs) That cuts to the bone. One who leans on somebody cannot serve the God of truth. Strength is the medicine for the world's disease. Strength is the medicine which the poor must have when tyrannized over by the rich. Strength is the medicine that the ignorant must have when oppressed by the learned. And it is the medicine that sinners must have when tyrannized over by other sinners. And nothing gives such strength as this idea of monism. Nothing makes us so moral as this idea of monism. Nothing makes us work so well at our best and highest as when all the responsibility is thrown upon ourselves. If the whole responsibility is thrown upon our own shoulders, we shall be at our highest and best. And when we have nobody to grope toward, no devil to lay our blame upon, no personal God to carry our burdens, when we are alone responsible, then we shall rise to our highest and best. This is the only way to reach the goal, to tell ourselves and to tell everybody else that we are divine. And as we go on repeating this, strength comes. He who falters at first will get stronger and stronger and the voice will increase in volume until the truth takes possession of our hearts and courses through our veins and permeates our bodies. Delusion will vanish as the light becomes more and more effulgent. Load after load of ignorance will vanish and then will come a time when all else has disappeared and the sun alone shines. Fuck. 
Nature is not kind to the weak. Be strong. Do with that what you will. You can start from the physical level. Get your body strong. Get active. On the mental level, be uncomfortable. Do uncomfortable things. Make yourself mentally strong, able to bear anguish. Do things that are difficult. See, your mind is a really interesting thing. One of the insights from this yoga teacher training. Your mind is the first thing to tell you to take it easy and to slow down. And then when you take that break, break, your mind is the first thing to tell you what a fucking weakling you are. Isn't that interesting? Listen to your heart. You gotta listen to your heart. Follow your gut. Get out of your mind. Your mind doesn't know shit. Here we are living in a world with a bunch of people who use their fucking mind like it's a fucking... Know everything. Like it's a know-it-all. Like it's the master and commander. Meanwhile, losing complete connection with their heart, with their intuition, with their spirit. That's how we're in this fucking mess. So it's on us. Be strong. Be compassionate. Find the truth. And that comes from inside of you. That's not coming from anywhere out there. None of that shit going on is coming to help you. Never has, never will. Up until COVID, did the public health department, did they do anything to make any, anybody healthier? Or do anything to put forth rules and mandates and all kinds of bullshit to make people healthier? Rid the world of obesity and heart disease and addiction? No, they didn't. So then COVID comes along and they get to be the fucking, do their little power play. It's cute. Tell people what it means to be healthy. Tell people how to get well. It's really interesting. I find that fascinating. Just things to think about. These are things to think about. So, <laughs> to lighten it up a moment, um, I'm super stoked. I am, I've been asked to, I, I'm a guest teacher, speaker at the gathering put on by Runga Life with my brother, Coach Joe DiStefano, the kettlebell and breathwork Jedi Master. He's the man. Um, it is October 7th to the 9th in Austin, Texas. All of the information for this will be in the show notes. I will be teaching the ebb and flow breathwork yoga routine in the mornings. Super stoked about it. This is a world-class event. Um, the modalities 
and the technology that will be available at this event are at the level of and more elite than what I had access to during my NFL career. This is the best of the best biohacking, healing, energizing equipment on the planet. We've got vitamin IVs, NAD drips, ice tubs, hyperbaric chambers, saunas, master breathwork coaching, master movement coaching, everything you could possibly want. This is the dream fantasy experience. Uh, So I'm super stoked about that. There will be, there's more information about that in the show notes. If you are interested, um, check it out, head over to their website, the gathering at rungalife.com. Definitely check the show notes because I'll have the right address in there. Um, but that'll be a lot of fun. I'm really stoked about that. Uh, so Hey man, in this day and age, in this moment in time, I pray that you are just tapping into yourself and getting to know yourself beyond what you could have ever imagined. And you are feeling the truth of your being. Because nothing else really matters. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. So... I think that's about it, folks. Um, So, book recommendations, Living at the Source, The Yoga Teachings of Vivekananda. Highly recommend it. Fucking powerful, as you you can hear. Um, Check out my brother Gus's book, How to Kill a White Man. It is riffs on life in the techno age. He is currently starting a to film a number of these vignettes as short films. Got into the London Film Festival, did some other really cool things, the South American Film Festival. Highly recommend it, How to Kill a White Man. Uh, I will have the link for that in the show notes. It's super funny, very insightful of the times. What is it to be a young person and having having to navigate the dating app shit? Anxiety, challenges of the techno era. I think you will enjoy that. My other tome of wisdom, Be Here Now, of course, by Ram Dass, my soul father. Be here now. Amazing. Just just a delight. You can go back and listen to my episode where I break down Khalil Gibran's The Prophet. Just, just one of the all-time greatest texts ever put forth by a human being. Um, it's difficult to understand the wisdom that's in this thing. And I posted about it on Instagram and somebody said that the Quran, a lot of Gibran's wisdom or ideas came out of the Quran, which I thought was really fascinating. I I can't, I haven't uh, dove into that yet, but I'm interested to do that. So that might explain it. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, I was token on a little cannabis earlier. This is my new cannabis company, Revenant. Revenant Cannabis. This is some XJ13. We've got pre rolls. We've got all kinds of good stuff. Um, that will be available widespread soon. We are in a handful of dispensaries in the Inland Empire and San Diego County. Be sure to check that out. I'll have the website up there for you to peruse and just just check it out. I'm super stoked about it. It's with my brother Kyle Turley, Jim McMahon, Ricky Williams. Um, 
we're having a lot of fun. So I think that about does it, everybody. Um, listen, be in your power. The world needs you. We need lights. We need compassionate, strong people. That's what we need. That's going to get us through to the other side. God bless all of you. Sending you lots of love and power. Hope you're having an excellent week. And I will see y'all on the flip side. Peace.